Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Monday, May 10, 2021. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. We have a lot to discuss today, so put your seatbelts on. We have the makings of a market reversal. Now it wasn't accompanied by tremendous volume, so we have to keep that in mind. We're still above home base or the 20 period moving average among all other moving averages on the daily chart and beyond. So we need to keep that in mind. But as we know, all moves begin on shorter time frames and they morph onto other charts. So obviously throughout the video tonight, we're going to look at other charts and I'm going to decipher where she is, what the market's doing, where the important spots are, where does a recovery take place, also known as AKA a rescue operation. And then we're going to discuss a whole host of other items. First and foremost, we're back to looking at the daily chart and seeing what jumps off the page. What is the prevalent thing on the daily chart? Well, obviously today's candle stands out. It is by definition a reversal candle. Now it would have been better had they made a new high, finished on the lows with heavy volume, all that stuff. But the market doesn't always give you exactly what you want. It has to start from somewhere. A question might arise that says, hey, how come it's not just another down day? How do you know that the market's not going to shoot back up and make new highs tomorrow? And frankly, I don't know that it won't, but some of the evidence is in place that it won't. One piece of evidence that's in place is 419. So we know 419 was important. We know that from before. If you don't remember that from before, it was important before, it's important again. So the market's now below 419, it's below 420, it's below the big fat round numbers. They couldn't really get very far as of yet, and they've started to fail. Now, if they came down to pay a visit to 419 today and bounced right off of it and made it look like nothing much happened, that's a different story. Visiting 419 and closing below that on the day is another ball game entirely. Let's run through some other charts so that you can get a sense for what I'm looking at, how I view things. So we're starting on the 240 chart, and it's not a whole lot different from the daily chart. You have this last candle, which I'll consider a breakup candle, and obviously price closed below that, right on top of, or even slightly below, the 20 period moving average on the 240 chart. So all in all, the 240 chart ends the day negative. Of note, puzzle piece on the table. What about the 120 minute chart? Looks a little bit different, so we'll analyze it. Let me move it over, and we have a breakup candle here, and the low was 419.16, just slightly above 419. So they gave up the ghost in terms of getting below that. However, keep in mind that this 240 minute candle really didn't close below there. This one ended at 3.30 in the afternoon, so this is a new candle, and it's only a half hour long. What else do we have on the 240 chart? Well, the next breakup candle low is 416.95. Now we can already see without too much effort that in this general zone, there's a lot of stuff going on. Let me explain. This is the way I look at things. This isn't the way you're going to find them in the textbooks. Here's what I mean. So there's 416.60. I'll explain where that comes from in a moment. Again, this is only relative to the 120 minute chart. So let me go through some stuff that jolted over. Let's move it back. So the low of this candle, the last breakup candle that hasn't been tested yet is 416.95. 416.60, where does that come from? How about the high? This is a breakout area. Why is that? Because here's a breakdown candle and price went up to run a test of the breakdown candle and they were able to get above it. They were able to close above it and guess what? They kept going. So coming back to run a test of a former breakout area is normal garden variety market behavior. 41660, could they go lower? Of course they could. 416 is below that. It's a round number. It's slightly below that last breakdown candle. And for them to spike into it down to 416 or even lower is normal garden variety market behavior. Now keep in mind, if they're getting, this is just the way the market works the majority of the time. If they're getting below this, which is 416.95, 
then we know what a likely destination is just below that for 1660. And keep in mind, at some point, they'll fight to get back above the breakup candle low for 1695. So spiking below it, running a test of some lower numbers. And remember, this is a 120 minute chart. So this is two hours worth of time. There's a lot of time, a lot of stuff that goes on in a two hour period of time. So what I'm doing is giving you an idea based on what we see happening, for example, maybe on Tuesday, are they running a test of some of these lower numbers? Remember, they're going to want to fight back to a certain spot. And of course, inside the numbers members, they'll have a beat on the more specific real-time information in real time. Hourly chart, what do we see? Well, you can see they gave up this particular candle, this breakup candle low. Again, same 419.16. And again, they're playing somewhat of some games as they didn't close below it on the candle ending at 3.30 in the afternoon, but they did give up the ghost and traded below it. Keep in mind, this is a half hour's worth of activity. And tomorrow, where we open is going to determine what happens in the morning anyway. Something else that we also discussed a number of times, which is at some point, somewhere along the line, one of these bull flag patterns is going to fail. Now, back to the daily chart. This is kind of sloppy. However, essentially, this is the same thing. It's a bull flag pattern. The market breaks up and it puts in like two weeks worth of time, eating time off the clock, which is generally good for building energy for another move higher. They start to break out late last week, and guess what? Here they are on their way back down. We don't know what the result is, but we know where the important stuff is. They start getting below 416.60 and close candles below there, and there's more trouble in paradise. Even on a 15-minute chart, look what happened. The market went all the way down. It found support around 419, give or take, which is also coinciding today with the 100 period moving average on this particular chart, and then it puts in a bearish, flaggish kind of thing, and into the end of the day, they kill them into the close. Sometimes they rip them up into the close, other times they kill them into the close. You don't know which way it's gonna go, that's why into the close, anything goes. Now, we'll get into inside the numbers, we'll go through the commentary, we'll circle back to stocks on the move. However, I do wanna make one comment about the stocks before we get going. Sometimes things happen and you don't really understand why certain things happen until later on. So for example, what you'll see later when we go to Stocks on the Move, you'll see we didn't get the traditional bounces, rip hires out of some of these stocks, even as time went on throughout the day. And that's a tell. What's happening is, and we're gonna discuss more about this as the video goes along as well, what you see in the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the Dow, is not necessarily indicative of what we see underneath the covers. There's been a bear market in many, many stocks across the board. Not all of the stocks, but a lot of the stocks. And the ones that haven't rolled over yet are the ones that are going to bring the index along with it on the downside when it happens. A lot of the stocks are getting tired. When you don't see the buyers step in, when you don't see a bid underneath some of the stocks, even if it's not at my number, even if it's at a lower number at some point later in the day, when that doesn't happen and they sell stuff for the majority of the day or they just run sideways, there's a lack of buyers available. There's no bid under the market. It's not like there's a big flashing sign somewhere. It's one of those things where I've seen this before. Let's go through the commentary. We'll circle back to Stocks on the Move and have more of that discussion. Happy Monday. We wake up flat after an attempted rally overnight. She's starting to break upward, following a lot of time, eaten off the clock for the last few weeks. That was what was going on early in the morning, overnight. Obviously, things change throughout the day. It's not how they open them. It's not how they trade them throughout the day. What's most important is how they close them at the end of the day. So check this out. Zero Dark 30, what's the first thing on my mind? They're starting out rather quiet, which is typical for a Monday. They're in no man's land, AKA new highs. From a big picture perspective, the big number on the board is SPY 419, give or take. 
They gave it up into the end of the day, but 419 was the number on my mind at zero dark 30. If in fact they sent the market down, where were they going to go? Now, a lot of stuff happens throughout the trading day. Doesn't mean they get there in one shot, in one bite, in one gulp, or in a straight line. But there are no accidents nor coincidences. For some reason or other, 419 was on my mind at zero dark 30. At the time, it was about 30 S&P handles away from current price. So it was in the spirit of being prepared. And then, of course, from a shorter term perspective, there are other numbers that we have to deal with. And we're moving along. What if they run a quick shakeout operation down south? Is there a spot? This is 926. Around 421.85, you know the routine. Here's a five-minute chart. Right of the vertical is today's activity. 421.85 is the number on the horizontal trend line. And guess what? That was, in fact, support early on. They dipped below it. First, they spiked above it. They dipped below it, back above it. That was early support. 9.35, they're into the showtime area, 4.21.85, that's the top end. It was early, five minutes into the day, it's higher risk, but it was the spot. We're moving along, PLTR gave a minimum required base hit, then fell out of bed. Traders who bought the SPY need to book profit along the way. And there they go, 9.48, traders who purchased the SPY around, it says 4.22.85, should be 4.21.85, that's a typo, however... They need to book profit along the way. 422.50 is a reasonable target. Back to the chart. 422.50 is the second trend line. They went to the target, and then they were subsequently rejected. Now we'll move it along a little bit. First, they jerked around with the target. Then they came back down. They finally got there. They do that kind of thing. So we'll skip over that commentary. They start coming back down. The door opens for 420.70. Later on, they blew through that. We'll talk about that later. We'll also talk about PDD, which was one of our stocks on the move. Closed below the stop on the hourly close, then rallied back. They do that too. A little bit frustrating. And we're moving along. You can see the notes. You can pause the video, read the notes for yourself. Pause the video. Go back to the chart and double check the work. They were just in a back and forth chop shop formation for a while. By noon, they did the thing. 422.50 should be resistance as prescribed. 421.60 is support on a pullback. That's a give or take. Now I've adjusted on the chart the lower line, 421.60, and you can see what happened. Once they were rejected by 422.50, they came down, and the low in this candle is 421.62. Funny how that works. They did bounce. They got to a high of 422.01. It's a four-point S&P bounce, so it's not all that much. But then you can see what happened. They started to give up. They started to go sideways. They started to create a bearish, flaggish kind of thing. And then they fell out of bed for the remainder of the day. Let's see what else we have. This is a comment on the Qs. We'll talk more about it when we get to the Q chart. But I thought it was worth mentioning for Inside the Numbers members because I had my eye on something as it related to the Qs. And what's interesting is the divergences that we did see today. In fact... Most of the day, up until the very end of the day, the Dow was up, the transports were up, the Russell was getting killed, the Qs were getting smashed, the S&P was down, so we did have divergences, and we know when we have divergences, they're going to resolve themselves one way or the other. Either the indexes or indices that are up are going to catch up on the downside, or vice versa. There was enough information, at least I felt I had enough information that we weren't going to catch up on the upside in the big picture. So I thought this chart was worth putting out on the Qs. Talk more about it when we get to the Q chart, and we'll see what happens. Again, I'm going to scroll up. You can read the notes. Here's another teachable, learnable moment, not just for you, but for me too. There was a possible long trade at 420.70 and lower, so down to 419.90, was a zone that I felt that the SPY should bounce out of, at least for a trade. Now, let me scroll up, and we'll go through the rest of the notes. You can pause the video and obviously read the rest by yourself. But I want to go back to the chart, and I want to talk about that situation. Here's a 10-minute chart, and here's the example. So they came down, they made a low, and they rallied away. The low here happens to be 421.03. Now, I'm looking at 420.70 later in the day. They already came too close. I should have went lower. Now, I still may have had 
a poor trade out of the thing. Still might have been wrong, but this was wrong because I didn't follow my rules. Not because I knowingly didn't follow my rules, I made a mistake. You have to learn something from every single day, from every trade, good, bad, or indifferent. The fact of the matter is, we're gonna learn a whole lot more from the trades we lose on, and I lost on this trade. We're gonna learn a whole lot more from trades like that than we do from the winners. The winners feel good, we move on, and we go on to the next trade, we want another winner. But the losers, you have to analyze why was it a loser? What did I do wrong? Was I wrong or was it just that it didn't work? The number just didn't work? Well, here, I was wrong. And I was wrong for a reason that I would normally not take the trade. So I'm not about to hide behind anything. Here I am saying it was wrong. Here's the reason why. I'm a doofus. I have to wear the schmuck shirt, but I'm not going to make that mistake again anytime soon. I know better. Here's the list of stocks on the move. Facebook, Palantir, PDD, NVAX, DraftKings, MGNI. We'll take a look at those charts and we'll have a further discussion about stocks. Facebook. Now here's part of an example of what I was talking about before. Two numbers put on the board early and price was nowhere near there. So I know traders are looking at some of these sometimes and saying, how is he putting that up on the board? It's nowhere near 307. Pre-market, they were up at 315, even higher. 307, 26, 304, 77, put on the board bright and early. And you can see what happened. 307, 26 started to work. They started to bounce. They got to a high of 308, 88. It's not really enough. And then they came back down and they came up short of the second number. So obviously this was an important zone. How do we know that? Because price went there today. It was nowhere near there in the pre-market and that's where they went to and that's where they found stability. That was the place today. However, tomorrow that may not be the place because what did they do? They basically went sideways all day long after getting to 307, give or take. Similar situation for Palantir. 1890, 1816 were the numbers on the board. They never get to the second one. They come up a couple of pennies short. The low here was 1818, shenanigans. And they rally back to the first number, spike it a little bit, and they can't really get anywhere. This is what I'm talking about. There was never really any bid underneath any of these stocks. So they went to the support zone and they got stuck. They ate time off the clock, they hung out for a cup of coffee. We know what that generally means. Does that coincide with some of the other charts we looked at in the larger picture, the major indexes? And the answer is yes. Now you start to see there's a method to the madness how this stuff starts to come together. PDD, this one, the number was just flat wrong. It was a different number today all the way down here. They did rally back came up short of the second number. This was just a garden variety shit burger. It was wrong. I was incorrect in the number. Let me just show you something else for kicks. So under normal garden variety conditions, this is a spot. This is a spot that's a breakout area. This is a spot where they're gonna come back down to and have at least an intraday bounce because they've come back to retest or test a former breakout area. So this trade is still a trade that you're gonna take the majority of the time. When market conditions change, something else is going on and they're trying to tell you something. This is part and parcel to what I was talking about before. A few things seem awry. Here's NVAX, so you can see what happened here. Getting a haircut at the opening bell. This is the close on Friday. 166.18 and 160.41 were two numbers. You can see what happened. So technically, if you paint it by numbers, this one worked fine. They came back in, which goes to the other thing we were talking about. There's just no solid bid under almost anything. DraftKings, same story. They basically ate time off the clock or hung out for a cup of coffee all day long. They opened below the first number, and check this out. The opening print was 47.56. Opening below it by two pennies, that's a little bit of a tell. So they immediately go to the second number, and they found some stability. They tried to bounce, but you can see what happened. Again, there's no buyers out there. No buyers with conviction. I know what some of you are thinking. There's another number on DraftKings not too far away. Magnite, same routine, no bid. The numbers really just didn't work. Further speaks to a change in character going on across the market. 
What's going on over in Camp IWM? They were weak all day. They were down almost 3%. That's a big day as compared to, for example, the SPY down just a little over 1%. So they gave up the moving averages. Once they give up this pivot low, and if they give up this pivot low, it's a lot lower to go in the IWM. How do I know that? Just taking cues off the monthly chart. Now we talked a little bit about this before. Remember, this is a monthly chart. They take a lot of time to play out, but they did the thing where they put in a sign or signal of a trend change and they're coming down. So until and unless they eclipse the high and start closing monthly above the high, there's a turn here in the IWM. This is a monthly chart. These take a lot of time. The high is up around 234. They can make it look like that last statement was wrong a lot of times and still come back down. Until and unless they close a month above the high, then this is coming down. What about the folks down at the transportation department? So what did they do today? Now, it wasn't accompanied by tremendous volume. However, they spiked the high or they made a new high and they finished basically on the low. That's a tail candle. Now, they're still obviously high on the chart. However, they have to start from somewhere. The most important number on the board right now on the daily transport chart would be the last breakup candle low, 15,690.74. If they give that up, we'll talk. If they don't, it's just another discussion about a tail candle. What about the folks out in Silicon Valley? They got thumped today. This is the chart that was put up for Inside the Numbers members. Obviously, it was a little bit higher when I put it up, but not that much higher. They were already down on the day. And it's not like me to chase a market, for example. However, sometimes you shoot the wounded. Sometimes if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, it's a duck. It's a bearish pattern. They're hanging around the 50 period moving average, hovering, hovering, hovering. They ran up last week to fill this gap right here and they're failing. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. Your weekly chart, they tried to break out. Remember the recocking of the gun? They make a new high, and here's your failure. So what happens if during this week they start getting below the weekly chart, 20 period moving average, 324.60 is where it is right now. What if they close the week below that? That would be another sign. What about the XLF? Again, they were strong earlier in the day. They were positive. They made a new high. All of a sudden, they finished on the low. That's not a bullish sign, yet it's a bearish sign. Everything starts somewhere. The XLF was down nine cents. We're not gonna make a federal case out of that. And by the way, they're tremendously bullish. This is a weekly chart. Isn't this bullish or is it overcooked and too far from home base? Depends on how you wanna look at it. Here's a monthly chart. What are the odds that a chart looks like this and it's healthy? Is this a melt-up operation or is this a traditional way the chart rises and gives you a double in like a year, a little over a year? It's not typical, obviously. It was a rhetorical question. You all knew that. But the challenge is when they get into no man's land, you don't know where the top is going to be until, until they do something to give you a signal that a top may be forming. That's the way this stuff works. What about Smash Mouth? Does that look healthy? Another rhetorical question. No, of course not. This has 229 written all over it, which we discussed last week, I believe. And that's just for starters. Remember, remember what we just discussed in the SPY intraday chart. So they came down, they bounced away. Is it likely they're gonna find support close below here? Or would you really prefer to go lower because they came too close and they recocked the gun? Right. Did we learn something? I think so. There's some more spots. I'm not saying buy those spots. I'm just saying we'll watch those spots. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you, without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're gonna pull the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.